you want me to adjust the camera if you get comfortable? Oh, uh, it's okay. It's pointing here. It's yeah. going to be catching me for the presentation. It's not going to be so much about the screen. Uh, thank you everyone for coming out. I was really ecstatic to see we had it completely booked and I was really hoping all 30 would show up. But uh, I was actually kind of surprised. But yeah, thank you everyone for showing up. This is the first of several meetups that are to come for the year. And every meetup is going to be similar to this one. It's going to be a couple hours long, two presentations, some by me, some will be like for Sean back there. He's going to be giving a presentation, and we've got a couple of other speakers lined up to present for WordPress too. So this one here is a beginning level. Everything is basics in this one. Other ones will be a little more advanced, and they're going to vary along the scale. And in the meetups themselves, they may be an advanced presentation and a beginning presentation, so they'll be mixed. They'll all usually cost around five bucks, which basically covers the cost of the room. It doesn't make us any profit. We might make enough to have a beer afterwards, but that'd be about <laughs> it. But usually it's just covering the cost of the room, which is important. Um, this is a way for me to present my information about WordPress, a little bit give back to the community, and also to put myself out there to talk to everyone. So thanks again for coming out. The presentation today, the format I'm going to follow tonight is going to be relatively straightforward. Half an hour showing you how the presentation and then up to a half an hour for questions. Feel free to ask questions during the presentation if I happen to spot you because it's a bit darker in here than I expected when we turned the lights out, but the hazards of having a low end projector, you need the lights out for it to look good. At any rate, any questions at that point on it? Yes? Um, May I ask who you are? I don't oh, I'm know. sorry. My name is John Overall. What? I thought I'd done that. Okay, I'm John Overall. My business is johnoverall.com. I do web hosting, WordPress specialist. I've been focusing on WordPress as a platform for nine years now, since 2007, I guess. And that's all I've done. And I've built up a pretty decent business around WordPress, specializing in. My specialty in, in particular is fixing hacked websites. If your WordPress website, white screens, gets hacked or any of that problems, that's what I specialize in doing. But I'm also very good at building websites, designing them, doing uh, consultations to help people out with them. So, thanks. I didn't, for some reason, I forgot to even <laughs> say who I was. Okay, well, without much further ado, we shall start it up. That's it. Perfect. Okay, what I'm going to be doing here today is I'm going to be talking about the setting up of the basics of a WordPress install. Once it's installed on the site, going through the essential setups that are required to be done. Well, they're not required, but they should be done on any new, fresh install of WordPress. I'm going to make a couple of assumptions here for people, and for anyone who doesn't already know, uh, hasn't done it, all these, both these presentations I'm giving tonight on my YouTube channel at wpplugins8z.com, I also have two training videos I've created this past week that correspond to these, along with a downloadable PDF file that can be downloaded off my website at johnoverall.com. So it's johnoverall.com slash web training, or slash training. And that's a good place to go to get the information. So what I've got here is a fresh install of WordPress. Freshly installed, nothing has been done to it. The latest version of WordPress, which is going to be both a good and a bad thing for you. Sorry, John. It's out of focus. <laughs> that a little better? No. <laughs> Must be my eyes. That actually looks kind of focused to me. How's that? No, it's not fair. Yeah, I know that's getting worse. <laughs> I'll be ultra bummed if this is that bad of a quality. I've used it once. I should have got a. And I know I can't get another projector, so. Can you sort of make it up? Oh, that's much better. Are oh. you too close or too, yeah, what if it's too far close? away? Yeah. Why didn't you try moving it? I'm back here. Oh, my, my, my eyes feel good back there anyway. I'm going to grab my glasses and look. Can you knock the resolution of the screen down a little bit? Yeah. 
Um, good question. Yeah. It might need to be moved forward because it looks like the center is in focus, but the edges aren't as much. No, the projector. That's getting better, John. Technical challenges. Any better readable for folks? Any better? Hopefully. Yeah. In the back. Okay. Yeah, I. I will deeply apologize for that. It's the projector I bought. Yeah, uh, quite some time ago. I've used it once, and I thought I'd done pretty good with it. But I obviously not as good as I thought. Okay. Uh, I'll try to explain as best I can to make it as clear as possible. A lot of things will be pretty basic. Have, has everyone here been into the back end of a WordPress dashboard? No, no. no there's a few that haven't. Okay, the YouTube, the YouTube video does make it very crystal clear on how it works. And it's got all of these screenshots and good proper capture. And what is that channel again? Um, WPPluginsAtoZ.com. Uh, you can go to WPPluginsAtoZ.com it is at .com, and in the top right, click the YouTube. I don't know my channel's name. Yeah, that's fine. Great, thank you. Okay, so back to once you've installed the WordPress uh, WordPress with the latest version of WordPress, you're going to face a choice. That choice is called Gutenberg, and Gutenberg is what they consider to be the future of WordPress. Those of us that have been around WordPress for a while think that they're pushing it a little too fast and they're trying to shove something down our throats that isn't ready for prime time yet, but Matt Mullenweg, unfortunately, the creator and mind behind WordPress is bound and determined to make it happen, whether he causes havoc in the community or not. But Gutenberg is coming, and probably two or three years time, you will have to learn to use it, but right now, not the best thing. So you'll see a point in here where it's gonna give you a choice right down at the beginning to install the classic editor for WordPress. And you can install Gutenberg, but there's not a lot of themes that work with Gutenberg yet. Over 70% of the plugins are not Gutenberg compatible yet, so it's just not ready for the general community. What you'll want to do is install the classic editor and activate the classic editor. And the reason for that is when Gutenberg is forced into WordPress's core with the next upgrade, uh, the next major upgrade version 5.0, it's going to automatically activate on anyone's website that does not have this classic editor activated. And what it will do is on websites that don't have this activated, even ones that are active currently, it's going to break their websites about 90% of the time. When does that happen? Mullenweg has been trying to force it down our throats for the last six months, and he keeps putting it off and putting it off, and he keeps promising it's going to be delivered by the end of this year. And so I'm really hoping it isn't. So if you with, have a site already, we should be checking to make sure. You should be checking to make sure you have this set up to help prevent yourself from having problems. Question. Mm -hmm. This only applies if you actually install WordPress on your system as opposed to uh, simply using a WordPress.com website? Okay, if you're using WordPress.com, you're going to be using Gutenberg whether you want to or not. Because WordPress.com is a managed platform by Automatic or WordPress themselves. And anything I'm, if anything I'm talking about here today, just to clarify, will have no impact or ability to use on WordPress.com. So if you're using WordPress.com, virtually everything I say is of no value to you. 
So what are you using? I'm using WordPress, but not WordPress.com. I'm using WordPress.org. Ah, okay. okay, and this is kind of a conundrum with WordPress. .com and .org are the same software, core base, but .com is the um, it's the commercial, commercial, sorry, the commercial yeah. platform for Automatic, which is the parent company of WordPress, which is owned by Matt Mullaway, which is the company that makes all the billions of dollars they made that supports the WordPress community or WordPress.org or open source software of WordPress that we use today. I hope that makes it crystal clear as mud. So how do you how do you change if you're in the .com over the .org? You first get your own domain, your own web hosting, set up the WordPress in that new domain and web hosting, and then you export all your files from .com into the .org site. It's really not as hard as it seems. It takes anywhere from 20 minutes to four hours to move a .com site to .org, depending on what you're going to do to it. Okay, so once you've gone through and set that up, then what you're left with, with a fresh install of WordPress, is you're always left with a bunch of junk and a brand new install of WordPress. It sets up with some sample posts. It sets up with some sample pages. It also throws in a couple of junk plugins for you, just to make sure you have some, some junk in there to begin with. So it's just a little bit of junk, and it used to take 15, 20 minutes to clean this stuff out, because you had to go through and click everything, remove it, throw it in your trash. Well, not anymore. Somebody was kind enough to create a plugin for us. So one of the first things you'll do is you'll click on Add a New Plugin, and you're going to search for a plugin called Tasks After Install. or WP Tasks After Install. Very simple plugin. It goes in, cleans out all, its, all the junk, sets everything nice and clean for you, and it does it with one click. Once you click Install It, then you click, you click Activate It, and as fast as it's activated, it deactivates itself. And what it's done is you'll notice it's cleaned out all those other plugins, the Akismet plugin, the Hello Dolly plugin, clean that out. <coughs> it cleaned out the pages, cleaned out the posts, cleaned out the sample media. Basically, it just cleaned out all the junk for you to make it nice, clean, simple WordPress website for you to install. And then what you do after you've done that is you go in and you remove tasks after install, just delete it. So the only thing you should have left is the classic editor installed on your site. And by having the classic editor, you're ensured that your site is protected against Gutenberg. Now once you've got that part done, what you'll want to do with the site then is you'll want to go through and set up your basic settings for WordPress. This is something that I will have inherit a site, a client will come to me, their site will have been up for years. And all of these basic settings will still never have been done after years of running their website. And it happens so often I can't emphasize how important it is to do these basic settings because some of them are really important, but a lot of people don't give them credit they need. Now, the first thing you're going to look at is under the Settings tab, go under the General tab. You're going to be looking at the settings from the top to bottom is site title, tagline, the WordPress address, the site address, email address, whether you allow membership to your site, default user roles, site languages, time zones, I'll walk through these in just a moment. And the date formatting and the time formatting and what day your week starts on. 
So starting at the top on it, your site title, when, when you're installing your WordPress website, and in the training video I've got up, it shows you how to install the, the site. When you're installing, it only allows you to put in the site title for your site. So usually what happens, you get in here and your site title is the site title you gave it, which is the other sandbox play thing. But the tagline is like this one here, just another WordPress website. That's what it default puts in for you. So that could go with your website for ages. And you won't see it because it's a hidden piece of information that only ends up in the code of your site that is picked up by search engines and other people. It's not picked up by you unless you look at this particular page. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yep. Um, as it happens, I installed the, I created a new um, WordPress site today, and I guess it must be Gutenberg because it, it actually asked me all these questions of what do I want for the tagline and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, is, does that mean it's too late for me to revert to the classic editor? No, nope. you can turn off Gutenberg and revert back to classic editor. Okay. You should find that information in the plugins because currently Gutenberg is just a plugin. It's not in the core. Oh, okay. It will be. It won't be in the core files until version five. Okay. So the tagline here. I'm going to change this one out, and it is my other sandbox. Another important thing to have set in here is your WordPress address. Hopefully, when you installed your site, you set it up with HTTPS. If you hadn't set it up with HTTPS, you'll want to change it now before you add anything to it. If you can't set it up with HTTPS, that means you're with a hosting provider, you need to leave and leave fast. Because HTTPS is standard now. The SSL certificates are free now. Anyone who's charging for SSL certificates, unless it's a specialized SSL certificate, is ripping you off. Now, there's a lot of companies that are still doing that. Bluehost comes to mind. So does uh, GoDaddy. They're still trying to charge for the SSL certificates. Whereas almost every other host out there is giving them away free because, well, they don't cost anything anymore. So you'll want to have that. And the important reason behind that now is as your website builds out and it becomes searched and indexed by Google and other search engines, if your not site is not SSL, they will throw up a big red warning flag on your site that says, this site is insecure. Anytime someone comes to visit your site, they'll get this big warning red label. This site is insecure. Are you sure you want to proceed? You know, you may have seen that already when you hit websites. Well, that doesn't mean the site's insecure. It means they're not using SSL more often than not. <clears throat> so you'll want to take care of that. You'll also want to make sure you've decided whether or not you're going to use www in the title or not. That is pretty much now just a, a lucky thing. What am I looking for the word here? I love when my brain has a word that goes. It's just, a, it's just a, a way of having <clears throat> the appearance of the site, of the, of the domain name. Like my website, johnoverall.com, still has the www in front of it, simply because it's been there for 13 years now, and if I change it, it's going to make a massive impact on my SEO. Is it almost redundant now that it's the term www? It is redundant. Yeah. It, it, it used to be required back at the beginning of the internet. Now it's redundant. But if you've already had that on your site for a few years, when you rip it away, <laughs> it makes a major impact on your SEO, because all of your links break. Because search engines see johnoverall.com and www.johnoverall.com as two different websites, even though they're exactly the same. It's just a matter of that one www. So you make your choice here. Site address, the difference between WordPress address and site address. This is to get creative if you're doing extra security, running specialized systems. You can actually take your administrative area of your WordPress and put it on another URL than, your, than the front end of your website that your visitors see. I have clients where the URL for the administrative area is in a completely different URL than the site address that the visitors see. And that's a complex thing that's generally not needed. Most, most of the time, probably 98% of the time, this should always be the same URL for both.
Email address. This one is key, and I have to learn not to uh, leave my email address there when I set up a site for a client, because nobody ever changes it. That email address you put there, every administrative email address created by that website will go to that email until someone changes it. And it is, it's relatively easy to change, but nobody ever changes it. I've still got clients that I did work for six years ago, and I still get an occasional email from their site, and I still email them, can you please change my email? <laughs> Tired of getting stuff for your site that I don't get worked on, don't get paid for. So... You'll want to set that, and you'll want to generally pick an email address that you use for administrative purposes, not your general email address. Next item down the line is the membership. Now, you can check here to allow anyone to register on your site. I recommend against setting it here. If you're going to run a membership site, an e-commerce store, where people have to register and get accounts, etc., you do not need to check this box anymore. All those other plugins take over that for you. What happens if you check this box? Every spammer out there will create an account on your website. And believe me, they can create hundreds of accounts and they can do it in a matter of hours. I've had it happen to me on websites where you open it up and all of a sudden you've got 200 accounts from Russia or China or Yugoslavia or some other foreign place that have no reason to don't, site. don't take it. So it does create problems. So you want to leave that unchecked. It generally defaults to unchecked, but leave it there. Now the one thing you do have an impact on, even with plugins such as e-commerce and stuff, is the subscriber role. And the default role is set to subscriber. Now there's rarely a reason to change it. But you could change it to contributor, author, editor, or you could have it default to administrator. Why someone would do that, I have no idea. Maybe you just want to let everyone into your site to play havoc. But you just leave it there, the subscriber rule. Good to check it to make sure it didn't accidentally get changed. Site language, you could have a different language site. WordPress is now available in just about every language across the globe. And you can change this site language at any time you want. If you want it all in French, you can change it so it's all in French, and even all your content on the front will display in French. Date format, this is just a preference, how you like the date to show up, whether it be month, day, year, or year, day, month, or whatever format you particularly care for. Same with your time format. And then the final one here, is the day your week starts on. My week starts on Sunday. I don't know why WordPress defaults to Monday. Maybe, oh, I know why. He's Jewish. <laughs> That's why. Defaults to it. Um, anyway, the week defaults on, on Monday to WordPress. So you can change it to whatever day of the week your week starts on. You can save those changes. Those are some cha cha uh, settings that so many times I found had never been set and changed. Next block you'll want to go to in settings is the writing block. It's right underneath it. And there's a few settings in here that need to be changed and set. Actually, oh, sorry, wrong one. Okay, it will already have it set for you. Default post category set to blog. If you've already created categories in here, or your site's been running a while, you'll have multiple categories to choose from. And this is something you may want to revisit down the road. If you've built out your website, you've got multiple categories for your blog postings. You can then go in there and reset the default category. Like if you always publish to a uh, category called recipes, you can change this so it default posts all your posts to recipes category instead of always having to remember to check that default category, that category setting when you're creating your post. The post format, this is not always going to be available, it depends on what theme you have in there, but the default post format should be standard, unless you have a reason for it. And the classic editor settings, this is a new setting, replace the Gutenberg editor with the classic editor, or you can use the Gutenberg editor by default, 
and again, check to make sure you've got that box set the way you want it set. And the post via email, this is an interesting experiment that has been ongoing with WordPress for about 10 years. And to date, I have not seen it work very well yet. It's where you can set up a email, ad email address here, a login name and information that you can then send an email to your WordPress website and it will automatically create a post from that email. I've experimented with it off and on over the years to see if it's ever going to work and usually it creates a post that is so malformatted you spend more time straightening it up than you would have writing the post from scratch. So it's usually not worth the effort. Reading settings. These reading settings here are for your blog, blog page on your website, the index, the blog index page and your RSS feed index page. And what this is for is to tell how many posts will be listed in the blog index or the RSS index. The default is 10. I find myself, I usually set it down to five for my uh, blog page index, just to cut down on the number of pages that get uh, produced or posts that get produced to allow the page to load faster. And the RSS feed, does everyone in here know what RSS is? No. Okay, RSS, real simple syndication, it's something that is still used today, but most people don't really pay attention to it. And way to look at it here. Oops. We could go to, oops, wrong one. We could go, for example, to my website at johnoverall.com, but if you take almost every WordPress, any WordPress website, you can do this too. You just go forward slash feed, and what it will produce is it will produce a page like this. What this is, this is a list of the last five articles that have been produced on my site. The WordPress training video, the Yoast SEO plugin, and the login redirections, uh, WordPress specialist uh, plugin, that's my podcast, and then the other one. This information here can be read with a special RSS feeder. You can subscribe to RSS feeds via email, get all of this information in email. Virtually every website you look at has an RSS feed. All you gotta do is find it. Almost all of them, all you gotta do is put slash feed after it and the RSS feed appears. But it's a quick way to read the information in text. And that's what you're setting here, is how many feeds are gonna show most recent feeds. You could have it show your last 60. You could have it show your last five, your last 10, whatever you are comfortable with sharing. One of the important things you'll want to do though, is the next item down, is for each article in that feed, you can either have it show the entire article or just the excerpt or a summary. And the summary is pulled from the excerpt. If it can't find an excerpt, it takes the first paragraph or so. The reason you want to change this to summary is you want the site. You don't want them in your RSS feed. You want them to use your RSS feed to get a quick, easy look at what's available on your site. But once you've got their interest, you want them to click the links to go to your website because your website is where you're selling everything. Your RSS feed, you're not selling everything. You can see the difference between the RSS feed and what my website looks like. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to limit it to, to just the excerpt so it's just enough to get their, their, their uh, attention and then they have to click through to the article to load the article up on the website. So they get all of that, and if you're running any advertisements, anything like that, they get to see it. So you'll want to set that to summary. And then if you're just building out this website, it's brand new, not ready for the public, check the box that says discourage search engines from indexing this site. 
what this does is this keeps Google, Bing, all the well-behaved search engines. Keeps them all from indexing your website while you're building it out. Keeps people from sneaking in, seeing your content, etc., etc. And save those changes out. When you uh, select that last choice, does it come up with uh, the images that you sometimes see? It says website under construction. No. Is it later? No, that's a uh, that's a maintenance mode plugin to do that to create that. This all this does this is code in the background so that if Google finds your website while you're working on it, it'll see this do not index, do not do not search. It just goes okay, go away. Yeah. And Google goes away for a while. It'll come back again, but you'll it'll keep going away until you remove this. The one thing that can happen though is it's really easy to forget to turn that off when you go live with the website. Mm -hmm because it only has one small warning on the website. Uh, when you log into a WordPress website, when that's on, you have a warning right here on the front page somewhere. Where's the warning at? There, it's a little teeny tiny warning right here. They used to put it up here in the top, but for some reason they've removed it and put it there. It's like, okay, you made it simple, but now you've complicated it. Okay. Settings. That's the reading settings. Discussion settings. These are the settings you're going to set up for comments on your website, is what they're mostly used for. The first ones, the first section here, the default on this, they, okay, they default removed it, removed it. It used to be checked, all of these, but it looks like they've changed the settings again. Double check it anyway, but these first three settings are important that they be unchecked. They used to be usable items, but they're no longer very valuable. The first one was attempt to notify any blogs linked to an article. In other words, if you wrote an article and you linked to CNN, your website would try to notify CNN about your thing. Well, that's no longer a valid use. The ping system has been abused by spammers. The same with the second one, allow link notifications from people linking to your website. Spammers figured out how to abuse that one too. And so you want to turn those off. They just suck resources on your website if you use them. And if you're on an inexpensive hosting provider, it can cause you to be shut down. Cause your website to be shut down. Yes. So does that mean if you if you link to someone else's website, they don't get that notified? They don't get the notification. Oh. And they wouldn't even, they may not have something to allow them to be notified anyway. That, that's a pingback, right? That's a pingback. And it Ping. doesn't happen anymore? No, it still happens, but the vast majority of pingbacks occurring out there are being done by spammers. Uh, okay. It's like spammers have figured out how to abuse it to the point of like, if you've got pingbacks allowed on your website, you get all these notifications for linkbacks, and it's some spammer who's created a Viagra website. Mm -hmm. And he's linked to you. And basically why he's done that is he's hoping you will link back or acknowledge his links so he can feed off of your search engine juice. And that's what spammers have done. Spammers have ruined a good thing. Almost all the good things on the internet have been ruined by spammers and hackers. And I hope they only made a little teeny bit of money in the process. Uh, final one here is to allow people to post comments uh, on new articles. Now this one you may or may not want to check. If you're going to produce content you want people to comment on, you will want to check it. If most of the content you're going to produce is not stuff that people will be commenting on, maybe you're producing gal uh, image galleries or articles that you really don't need comments on, just turn them off completely. It helps keep the spammers away from your website. You don't have to set up another plugin to prevent spammers from leaving comments. Other comment settings in here. If you do allow this, you will want to force comment author to fill out their name and email address. You will want to uh, set, uh, well, it's already default set for enable threaded. They've got one here for users must be registered to log in the comment. This is something you could do if you're going to allow comments and have a membership site that only members to your site can leave comments. So they have to log in before they can comment on the site. So that's a useful thing to do. Uh, automatically close comments on posts after X number of days. This is useful if you write content that becomes stale dated. 
Like if you write content that after two months that it's no longer real valid com content, you'll want the comments to close on it because you won't want someone to come along a year later and comment on the article that is no longer valid. If you've got content that, such as I've got in my website, content that's like four or five years old that I wrote, still valid today, it's still nice to have leave the comments open in case somebody stumbles across it and wants more information. Um, show comments, cookies, opt-out uh, checkbox. This is something that you may or may not face. Show comments, cookies, opt-in checkbox. What this is for is for the GDPR, the glo uh, Global Data Protection Racket. I don't know what the R stands for anymore. I found it's just a racket. It's the EU's answer to personal privacy, and it's such a ridiculously horrendous thing that it ate up 37 hours of my time making my website compliant. So it was, it was a horrible pain in the neck. <coughs> and the reason I'm compliant, I have to be compliant, is I got clients in, in England, Germany, and France. So you, if you do any business with any EU citizen, and truthfully the way it's written, that EU citizen can be living in Canada, and they're still under EU law as far as what websites they visit. It's really a horrendous piece of legislation. So you may want to have that. And what that does, it shows a checkbox on the comments that lets them know that you're going to be sending them, they're going to be collecting a cookie for their comment. You'll want to have an email whenever anyone posts a comment. You'll also <coughs> want to have... Uh, where did it go? Oh, it's up here. Um, if a comment is held for moderation, you'll get an email. And you'll want to set up here... Before a comment appears, you can either set it up for all comments to be manually approved, or generally what I have for my sites is... Comment author must have a previously approved comment. So if someone's previously been approved as a, for a comment on my website, chances are they're not going to spam me because they delivered a decent email address, they delivered a decent valid comment. So the next time they comment, their comment just automatically appears. And you can also create comment blacklists and moderation. The blacklist is a naughty word list. Uh, any word list you don't want once it's inserted into there into the comment, it's automatically blacklist. You can hold a comment if it contains two or more links. I generally set this to one because anytime there's more than one link set in a comment, it's almost always spam. There's rarely a reason that for people to put more than one link in a comment unless they're trying to spam you or sell you something. The final bit down at the bottom is avatars. The avatars is default set to mystery man I like to change it to gravity uh, to the Gravatar logo. And a Gravatar logo is a universal logo that a large percentage of people on the internet have one now. You just go to gravatar.com, enter your email address, you get a you get you you upload an image, and wherever you go on the internet that anyone uses Gravatar, that exact same image will be used across the web. It's a way to standardize your appearance across the web. I use it for that specific purpose alone because I can use the same image. And then I update the image every year or two with something new. Or maybe I've changed my look or I've decided I no longer look as old as I once did. Update. <laughs> so set those ones up. The media section, this one here rarely needs changing. And once you install your theme of choice, this is only partially relevant anyway, because whatever theme of choice you install on your website, that theme is going to have its own selection of image sizes. Uh, the default image sizes for WordPress are these three sizes, the thumbnail, the medium, and the large size image. So if you upload an image, for every one image you upload in WordPress, it automatically creates these three additional images. So you always have four images for every one image you upload to WordPress. And they're all the different sizes that can be used in different places. Well, some themes, like I have one theme, that it creates an additional seven sizes of images because of all the different places in the theme that it uses multiple sized images. 
So this is only partially relevant. What is really relevant here is this one down here, uploading files, organize my uploads into month and year. I've seen people uncheck it. They used to have a setting there that allowed you to set a specific directory for it. I noticed they no longer have it, and I'm not sure why they removed the setting. But by unchecking this box, what it does, it uploads all your images to one folder in your WordPress file folder setting. What that does is over time, having all your images in one folder, they may come a time where you might have to, or your developer or someone helping you might have to go into that directory to find something. And if there's 10,000 images in there, it's really hard to find something. So by organizing them by month and year, you can sort of remember when you're looking for something, oh, I remember that was like June or July of 2016. You go look in those specific directories and see what you're looking for. There you might not have thousands. You might only have a few hundred images to choose from. So it's a really good thing to make sure it's set correctly. And the second to last thing on here is the permalink settings. Fortunately, WordPress finally got wise and changed this default setting, although I still occasionally see it misset up when I'm setting up a WordPress site. And I've not figured out what causes the difference yet. What the permalink setting is on your website, to let you know what that is, that is when you've got a URL on your website, and of course you can't read it, but it says johnoverall.com, and then after that it says WordPress plugins A to Z podcast 372. So that's my permalink. What it did is it took the title of my post and it turned it into the link for the page. That's your permalink or clean link of your website. Now there's multiple ways to set this up. And why choose the other ones, I'm never quite sure. It usually makes a mess of it. Some people have specific reasons for it. Like you can set it for day and name. And so what it will do is it will set up the day, that the year, month, and day that the plugin is, is uh, that the post is created. It'll put in there 2018-09-06, and then it'll put the title of the post after it. It's not really good and clean. It doesn't help with SEO. It just makes a mess of things. It can do the same thing with the archives or the, po or the numeric. All of these, they have uses, but they're not very good and clean for SEO. For SEO purposes, you always want post name. Just simple post name. And but you just... Sorry, what did you call it? Post? Post name. Post name. Yeah, it's the, it's the second from the bottom one here in these selections. It's right above custom structure. And when you click on any one of these, and I know it's not showing real clear, but anytime you click on another one, it changes the custom structure for you. So it automatically writes the custom structure for you. This is something that WordPress only implemented about a year and a half ago. Okay, once you've got the post name, you'll want to save that. The optional piece down here is category base and tag base. I was reading up on these to see if they were useful. I couldn't find any value to them in particular for SEO or anything like that. Again, they're just like the other structures. They often make more of a mess than they help. So there's really no point to them. So just make sure that post name is set and then save that. And then the final item here is privacy setting. This is brand new from WordPress. This came in right after the GDPR. WordPress created a specific section for you to make creating your privacy policy easier. What this does for you is it allows you to go in here and choose a page. If you've written your own privacy policy, you can choose the page for it. Or you can use the page they've created for you, the default page. And once you've done that, when you click on the edit for it, it gives you a sample of what the privacy policy is based upon your website. Now, an interesting thing that I've learned about this privacy policy, you really don't want to implement this part until after you've installed your theme and all the plugins you're going to use. Because 
it seems like everyone took the GDPR fairly seriously and they implemented some stuff inside their plugins and themes that caused them to send a little bit of code or a sample snippet to the privacy policy sample for you to look at and to edit. And I only recently discovered that when I was updating my privacy policy last week and I added some new plugins and these new plugins were suddenly available with little snippets for me to copy from instead of having to figure out how to write it into the privacy policy. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so when you publish this, it actually end up as a URL on your website. Yeah. Your domain name, right? So blah, 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 dot. Privacy, privacy policy. Right? Do you think that will affect SEO? What? Google will, will favor sites that have a privacy link? Uh, probably eventually. They haven't started to yet that I know of. I mean, Google's already in trouble with the GDPR. Google, Facebook, uh, Google, Facebook, and Twitter are being sued in the EU already for violating the privacy policy. Yeah. So maybe they don't really want to help them out. Yeah. I couldn't tell you. I don't know if the privacy policy will help or hurt you for SEO. I just know it's a requirement. Canada has its own requirements for a privacy policy. You're actually, as a Canadian, you're required to have a privacy policy page. Not as extensive as the GDPR. But the thing is, if you, if you comply with the GDPR privacy policy, you automatically comply with Canadian. And unfortunately, my own point of view from it, from everything that went through this, is that the United States, Canada, and um, Australia, New Zealand, all the other major countries are going to end up adopting the same rules and regulations as the GDPR, simply because it's a great money grab. Okay, but the, and that's the privacy policy there, and that covers all your basic settings for WordPress. It doesn't cover basic plugin installs or anything else. I do cover a couple of the basic plugins in the YouTube training video that is up there. So you might want to have a look at the have a look at that. Open the floor for questions. So on this last thing, mm -hmm. I add a new plugin. I'm playing. I try this plugin. It changes my privacy policy. I take it away and I add a it, new one. It does it again. It doesn't oh, change please. your privacy policy. Please, John. Uh, sure. Flip the lights up. So it doesn't affect my privacy policy. Enough. It doesn't automatically affect your privacy policy. What it does is when you go to the privacy policy here. And now we won't be able to see it at all. On the privacy policy settings, there is a link that has per preview. And when you click the preview link, it opens up a sample page for you. And it's a sample page based upon the plugins and other information that is installed on your site that have provided information to be fed into that to make it easier for you to create a privacy policy. So I can ignore it. You can. At peril. You got. You got to remember, as a Canadian, you are required to comply with. No, but if I have a privacy. Oh, if you have one, I have a privacy policy. But yeah. adding a plugin isn't going to force me to have to re. Only if you're comp trying to comply with the GDPR, because a new plugin mm -hmm. might add new cookies to the website. It might collect new information. Yeah, well, and that's that, can stay in Yeah, but <laughs> that's the thing about dealing with the, the GDPR. It's like yeah. to, if you're going to comply with the GDPR. You will have to pay attention to it because, like, you have to, with the GDPR, you have to go through and figure out all the cookies that your website is delivering to people. Like, my website delivers 15 cookies on one page. On another page, it only delivers seven. On another page, I think it only delivers six. So I had to actually figure out what cookies I was doing. I got a, I got a list of, like, 20 cookies my website produces, and I had to list them all out for the GDPR. And every website that was complying has to do that. That's only one of the small things. That's insane. So basically, when your site's running, you've got a privacy policy, you've got all your plugins set up, everything's humming along, mm -hmm. someday you decide to install a new plugin, mm -hmm. at that moment, you should remember to go back to the privacy policy area yeah. and see if that plugin has generated a new yeah. snippet. Uh, I, don't, I don't bother myself. What I do is every once in a while, I'm just doing updates and I'll click on things to see what's changed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something I... I fret or lose sleep over. I'm not overly big enough to be worried about it myself, but I could still fall afoul of the walls. So I do my best to comply with them. They but can't make enough money suing any of us. No, no, they, they spend more money and then try to get it from you like squeezing blood from a rock. You can only get so much blood from a rock and it's usually your own. Come on. Mm -hmm. So we didn't come
had her cookies, and I didn't know websites, well, I guess I do now, know that websites produce cookies, because sometimes they'll come up and say this website uses cookies, and allow or not. So from your end, a user end, mm -hmm. a creator end, mm -hmm. what are cookies? Okay. Um, if that's not off topic. No, it's not. It's actually quite fun. What cookies are is cookies are, they're a, a little text file. And that text file reaches into your computer, and it will ask your computer for information. Uh, I'll ask your computer, hey, tell me what your browser is, what screen resolution they're using, what computer they're using, what um, uh, uh, OS they're using, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So but it collects technical? It, it collect, well, it can collect technical information. Sometimes it can collect personal information. Uh -huh. Sometimes the cookies uh, don't collect anything from you, but they take stuff from the website and they put it on your, web, on your computer. Take, for example, your bank. When you log into your bank, your bank puts a cookie on your computer that says you've logged into this account from this computer, and we validated this computer, and this validation stays valid for 30 days. At the end of 30 days, it expires if you don't log into your bank again. Every time you log into your bank, you, your bank comes and looks for that cookie and says, okay, you got that cookie. It grabs the cookie from your machine, comes back, it updates the cookie, and then gets it back to your machine. So it can be a good thing. They are a good thing, in theory. And they, and they are a good thing and a bad thing. At the most, they generally transmit non-identifiable information, directly identifiable. Mm -hmm. it has to, you have to work to identify the person behind the computer or where the computer's at. But cookies are a good thing. Cookies have been with the internet since it was created in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. And they used to be more prominent. And there used to only be small ones. Uh, Google, for instance, every time you go to Google, they put a never expiring cookie on your machine. Never expires. It's there forever. So when you clear a cookie cache, uh -huh. and I haven't done that for a long time. Be careful when you do, because if you save passwords or anything like that on websites, mm -hmm. that's all wiped out, because that's what the cookie saves. Right. The cookie saves that information. So cookies are good and not so good. I can't say they're bad because they just, yeah. they're not so good. So as a small business, what kind of cookies would you want to use? God, I can't remember. I don't even pay attention to them. They're just automatically created by the WordPress itself. Oh. WordPress itself, when you log into WordPress, it takes three cookies to log into WordPress. It takes a PHP session mm -hmm. ID cookie. It takes a uh, user ID cookie, and I can't remember the third one. Mm -hmm. But it takes three cookies for you to even log into WordPress. From there, there's other cookies for the calendars, for... So that's something WordPress creates, though. Well, the use. programmers create. Okay. So there, there's cookies created for the WordPress core. Mm -hmm. Then for every plugin you use, it may or may not need a cookie. It might use WordPress's cookies. Right. Or it might create its own cookie to collect information or do something. So it's not something you personally no. do? Oh, it's, not, okay. it's something I could personally do if I wanted to. Like right. you can, a programmer can write a cookie right. to look for specific information. Right. But generally they're just coming through Gen the software. Generally they're just part of the software. Okay. And how do you find out how many cookies your site's generating? Uh, you can use a program such as, uh, I use uh, the developer, of, uh, here I am going to the screen. You can't certainly see it, but I use the developer version of Firefox. And when you use the developer version, it has a spot in the bottom that allows you to go in and look at the storage and then list up all the cookies that are there. And they do change per page. Like I said, I have one page that delivered seven, one that delivered three, one that delivered ten. I can't remember the numbers. But some of them were the same cookies with a couple added because of the specific use of the page with the calendar. Some of them were just a plain page. So but only Firefox does that automatically? No, I believe Chrome does it too. Chrome has the uh, developer tools too. I just don't like Chrome. Um, I can't remember. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Microsoft Edge has. Does Microsoft Edge has its developer tools? I think they do. They're kind of a little apart, but they do. Okay. So, that, or you can actually add specific programs to your site or to your computer for for doing that kind of work. So, but there's ways to always look. Like a developer can always look at the code of a site and see everything that's going on from the delivered um, on the user side, not the delivered from the program side. Uh, I think it's important to say that cookies uh, make the internet like so convenient for a variety of reasons. Yes. For example, uh, you've added something to a shopping cart, you've left, you come back a week later. There's another one, the cookie. It, it, it remembers what you had in your cart. 
but you didn't even have an account yet. So that's a reason for cookies. And that's another reason for cookies. It's like, if cookies were completely eliminated, then the internet might not be as nice. As it, won't, it wouldn't be as easy to use. Yeah. That was why they were originally created, was to make the internet easy to use. But they've been abused over time. Like everything on the internet. <laughs> like everything on the internet. It, there's like so now they're just making us admit when we have the good cookies, but the bad cookies never did put the privacy policy up That's right. anyways. Yeah. That's right. It's kind, of, it's kind of like gun laws. It's pointless to, re to register the legal gun owners when the criminals don't bother to register. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's, some of the things are just pointless. And that's why I said the GDPR is nothing more than a money grab, because what they did was they made these ridiculously huge fines. And only the major corporations could ever pay those fines. Anyone else that got fined by them would be out of business instantly. They'd just go, yeah, I give up. I declare bankruptcy and go do something else in their life. It's like if I ever got fined under GDPR, I think the minimum fine is like 20,000 euros. Oh, Lord. And it's like, yeah, I give up. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm out of business. I'll go find something else. It'll be a ditch digger or something. You know, it's like, I give up. That's pretty much it. But that's why... They, that's why they instantly went after Google, You'll still Facebook. Get cookies. Huh? You'll still get cookies. Yeah, still yeah. get cookies. Better cookies. Yeah. The chips in them. Might even get coffee. Yeah. yeah. Well, for those who drink coffee. The other questions? Can I ask an unrelated? Yes. You're probably going to cover this next week, but uh, next my, week? my, or sorry, not next week, next meeting, but my biggest issue as a newer developer is themes. Uh, finding that's, good themes. That's and, coming up. Okay, I figured that was going to be a that's topic. Not a I figured it wasn't here. wasn't today, but no. uh, man, I, I'm writing you, that one. That's if actually, you have any recommendations for consistent developers or people who make themes, I, I have about six or seven themes I use on a consistent basis. Oh, really? Eh? And I can pretty much use them for everything I do. Oh. Every once in a while, I have to go outside that. Paid or free? <laughs> hey, I don't bother with free stuff, free themes anymore. Free themes are pointless because I've had free themes in the past, and what happens is the developer, one, he's not getting any money. He usually did it as a college project. He's graduated, got a job at Microsoft now, and he doesn't care. Same with a lot of free plugins, unfortunately, that I used to use. Uh, probably in the beginning, 90 plus percent of all the plugins I used were, were free. Now, probably only about 15 to 20 percent of the plugins I use are free. I use the I use the premium or the premium versions. If there's a premium version available, but the free version still works for me, I'll use it until yeah. until I need to pay for it. But and themes themes are more critical than plugins in that the functions they create. That if the plugin or the theme developer disappears and doesn't keep the theme up to date, yeah, then you're yeah, going to be bought and they disappear. You still. I buy, all the themes I buy from have been good quality developers that had already been around for a year or two and have had thousands of downloads of it. And so they've already made some money. So once they've made some money, they keep going. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, the beginning ones are tough. Yeah. And uh, when I was watching a YouTube on, uh, on WordPress, mm -hmm. the fellow suggested that a plugin be purchased or downloaded to um, almost make it impossible for uh, cyber hacking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, word fence, that's the only thing I can think of there. But, um, yeah, so is that something you do to, to help keep uh, your website, from, how do you keep your website from getting hacked? Uh, I start by having, well, I, I run my own servers, so I have good secure servers to begin with. Right. That's the number one, finding a good quality hosting provider. That Who do you has recommend? JohnOperall.com. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend no one else anymore. <laughs> I used to give all the recommendations, but yeah. not anymore. Uh, the other companies I used to recommend, two years later, they changed hands, they sold, they changed their policies. Uh, like once upon a time, I used to recommend Bluehost. I can't even recommend them for low and cheap anymore. I didn't realize you host this. Yeah, oh. uh, I have my own servers. I have uh, five servers right now, and three of them are in Canada. Two of them are in the States. I, uh, I second John's experience. I've been only developing for a little over two years, but I've now had four clients where I did recommend them good people, but then that company was sold to some American corporation, and the service is just Pro like... Probably EIG. Just free fall. Oh. But totally. the, the thing about my hosting, though, yeah. is not cheap. What my, would yours be roughly? For there, there's no rough. My, I have a single price. It's oh. $35 a month. Oh. 
it's, it's one price, one price only. I used to do multiple levels, yeah. and then I realized it's pointless. It's like I was offering small here, they take advantage. It's like I just went done with it, one price, mm -hmm. they get all the resources they need. Right. And that's and that's the way I do it. It's so now, what, hap what happens when you retire and you move on to uh, the Bahamas? Well, yeah. he he sells the blue host 50, yeah, I sell the blue host and you're done. I, I really don't know. Okay. I have no answer for that. You yeah. know, my my <laughs> idea of retirement is 15, 20 years down the road. Who knows what's going to happen in 15, 20 years? Yeah. <laughs> well, look what the internet's done in five. Yeah. So. So you recommend good hosting for security? Yeah, good hosting for security. And, and then plugins or no? Plugins, I recommend WordFence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I use a plugin myself called WP File Monitor. And that's that's what I use for mm -hmm. my own sites. Right. It's those two items there. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so we'll take a bit of a break right now. And then uh, five, mm -hmm. ten minutes, get a sudden drink. Get some fresh air. For those of you who need nicotine like me, want some next presentation. Yoast. Uh, setting up the Yoast SEO yeah. plugin. Oh, uh, fun. <laughs> this is something that a lot of people install the plugin and never can fix it. Yeah. I'm guilty of that myself. While preparing for this, I finally up, I finally did the settings on my on my plugins website. Oh, really? Yeah. I never got around to that. This one fellow just went to me on the YouTube. He's very, very good. Um, there, is his last name? I forget his first name. But he's very good. And so, but from different people, different ways, and it sort of starts to gel a bit. changing so fast like there's no such thing as a true master expert i wouldn't say i'm close to an expert either because i've only been studying seo for a little under a year really about. yeah so it's really just like the best way i, I tell my clients just, uh, it can't it can't just be set up uh well site site map isn't for me exactly but it, but it should be should you be submit your yeah. site now? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Google or, or uh, Yandex or um, there's a few. Yeah. Well, Google's the big one. Yeah. Google Authenticator and yes. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there might have been a step you missed if it's not, like, is your site not coming from Google searches at all? Or is it yeah, just like. No, I mean, it's, that's another thing I still think of. Like you said, it's coming up under certain, certain, but not like Facebook and Pence or Dolores or Dolores. Okay. Yeah. Those come up in It's starting It'll to come, come up. Yes. So, Finally, so a lot, a lot of that is just, uh, uh, just needs to get, yeah. needs clicks, needs links. So, so when yeah. you, when people are putting in like some of our competitive companies, the big renovation companies, you can put like doors and come up. Yeah. Windows, they come up. Yeah. I know. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. A lot, a lot of it, so, so, so what is that? 
One of the reasons why it says there's such thing as an expert is companies, especially Google, uh, how they index the site and, and how they choose who gets higher up in the Google search is all smoke and mirrors. Because for the same reason John talked about with cookies, when, when they used to tell people, this is before I started getting into web, but people like John would explain this to you, when they used to tell people, oh, this is how we index your site, right. uh, people would con hard. They would build a site in a certain way to catch yeah. people looking for a certain thing and then con them. Mm -hmm. So companies like Google had to start we kind of obfuscating yeah. how they do it. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of it is just best guess and do your best. <laughs> Yeah, and, and all, it's confusing. I yeah. think it's more posting like educational, um, like videos and how tos and yeah. blogs, like current content. And yeah. yeah, correct. I don't know. Like, there's a marketing company that has a YouTube channel, and I kind of watch what she's saying. It's specific to window coverings, which is what mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. And um, that was where she was just saying the more kind of informative, like looking like you have a lot of it, articles and mm -hmm. things like that, really helps. Which some of these other big sites do have in videos. Do you, right. do you use Yoast on your WordPress site? I don't know. <laughs> I hope you do because Yoast is like, I like Yoast. from what I've seen, it's the best. It's the best because it gives you suggestions on content. Like it'll okay. say like, oh, like you can actually keyword. type in a keyword and it'll say like, oh, you've used this word here and here. That's a really good idea. But we, but we've noticed you haven't used it in your first paragraph. We suggest you do that. Mm -hmm. And okay, they do gotcha. things like that that really you help. Red, yellow, green, and so you know Excellent. if you're green, yeah. if you're okay, post, you're actually, we, I think I do, because okay, there's all yeah. kinds of alerts. What's happened is the person who looked after our website's gone, and so I just kind of was like, yay, that's, that's, that's what I've got, right, the driver's right. seat, I'm like, oh my god. So they gave me the admin, and I opened up this dashboard, and it was like, oh, yeah. yeah. I've been doing that's it for, here. I've been doing it for two years, trying wow. to like find something by myself in the back end. Right. So you're paying people and just, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. we pay monthly and monthly. The owners are like, you're I was going in the back, and they knew I was, but they would say, oh, we did this and we did that. We right. used to worry, and there's nothing changed ever. Yeah. Uh, and then you bring me this thing saying, you're, you're, new, you're moving up, you're moving up. So like, you know, so much. Like, I don't know where he was printing it from because it wasn't what I was seeing. Right. Yeah, we've anyway, like, had some like, specialty things, and I'm always posting, like, updating the pictures, but I'm worried about the size of them, and I'm, I'm slowing down. Yeah, that, so like, worried, too. All this stuff, because I just, I have, like, a little bit of knowledge as teachers. Like, I know how to yeah. post the things, but I don't know that they're in the right yeah. size. And, yeah. and I've heard that we have a few things which I didn't set up where there's links that actually take you off of our, their site. So that's oh. also not good. Yep, that wouldn't be Because good. when you get caught with stuff like that, you go down. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. true. Actually, linking is, is huge. Uh, or at least people think links are huge for How SEO. Does, well. like, do you have a set up links or do they just happen? Uh, the, you should set them up. So you know in, in WordPress when you have your, your content block, so you're in a post or a page, yeah. you can highlight a word and there's a little link button and yeah. the, uh, yeah, editing like tools. Yeah, so that is how you link to other stuff. But but on you can your website, you mean. Yeah, on your website inside the content. Yeah. And then and then there's like a little like cog. internal link? Yeah. Or oh, it can be internal or external yeah. depending on, oh, on yeah, where you, you point it towards, to right? right? And there's a little cog icon you can click and it gives you more options. Okay. And some of those are useful as well. So but it's just good to make sure that you're linking within your website and to other websites that are real websites because it, it, it makes you seem more legit. I know it's a lot. Well, of <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. This is what confused me because I thought I understood it. Sure. I am Scott. Sure. By the way, my name is Scott. Scott. <laughs> okay. Probably one of your first wives. Sure, it's Shop Open. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, SEO is. In all the contracts I do for clients, there's a section just for SEO that says like, I will not make sure your site gets to the top. I'll just help you. Uh, I'll just help. Right. <laughs> it's like it's worded that way, just because okay. like uh, uh, there is no way to guarantee. Really, I, I've, I've heard of companies where that's all they do and, and um, how how they go about doing it sounds so shady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, it's the same thing with YouTube, right? There's companies that are like, oh, we'll get you higher up in YouTube searches. And it's the same shady practices where they seem to have bots where they pay people in like Bangladesh to, to log in with 100 accounts <laughs> to right. comment and, and like and, or share. Okay, how's going to come back in for you? Yeah, yeah. Roll it. Yeah. This one takes about half an hour to explain at least. Videos, the yeah. video is like 25 minutes long, so I know this takes a little while to explain. I'm excited for this. Are you going to watch the video?
No, no, I'm not going to play the video there, so you can watch that on your own time. No. I'm going to try to make some of the things clearer that I'm going to play the video and grab it's questions, questions along the way. I know you can't see yeah. the screen yeah. as yeah. much as I hope. Yeah. 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 But obviously yeah. I didn't yeah. test it well enough. So I didn't realize what I was facing when I got yeah. into a little bit. You sure, you sure that thing is it's just as a rat, you know, I thought? You know, I'll print it right or something. It's, I don't know. I can always send it back to Amazon. That's the beauty of buying from Amazon. Packaging up these shit back. Internally. How long have you had it? About a month. <laughs> it's really... <laughs> Have you read the instructions? Oil spills. I know where I can. I know where I can borrow. Next time I do it, I know where I can borrow a high quality one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No worries. Which is what I'll probably do for next time. I'm too, big, I'm too big for this space. Um. The challenges of presenting. Yeah. Am I still alive here? I am. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, so do I have anyone have there? Or, it might be. It might be a picture. Oh, we've had a couple of thumbs up. Hey, we've had a couple of visitors. Oh, yeah. Thumbs up. As long as it's subscribed, which it people who didn't come today, they will know. Well, I expect people not to. I expect people not to show up. And we did better than average. We got at least half the people, more than half the people, we registered, which is better than average for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that car, like that. I've never been to meetups. That's probably. I've been doing. I used to do these meetups a lot about three years ago, and then I got busy in my life, and I could. Uh, continue the group. And I didn't run the group yeah. at the time. Uh, the and then in the springtime, the organizer page. of the meetup, the Victoria meetup group, stepped no, in. And as because as I was a co organizer, like I was given the opportunity to yes. take over. Yeah. And I went, okay, I'm going to take over and see if I can revive. Because this group has over a thousand members. And there's a lot of people that want to know about WordPress. And I figure if we have meetups that people like, it's like I appreciate after it, go on meetup.com, leave your comments about this. Whether you like it, dislike it, you like, didn't like, anything, just let people know if it was a value. And that will encourage all the other members in the group to come to the meetups. Now, they're always going to be maxed out at about 30 seats because mm -hmm. the venues I'm picking around town, they won't always be here. They'll be at other venues to make it easier for people to get to. Nope. And and they're always going. It's always going to be this price. So, okay. all right, let's roll it. Okay. So this second half, we're going to cover. I'm going to cover up setting up and using the Yoast SEO plugin. And for those of you that don't know or sort of have a vague notion, the Yoast SEO plugin is the de facto standard. SEO plugin for WordPress. SEO being search engine optimization. Search engine optimization meaning your goal with your website is to be seen and to be seen in the search engine such as Yahoo, Google, and Bing. Bing and Google being the biggest ones. Bing rapidly overtaking it. Now you might also be thinking there's DuckDuckGo and a couple of other up-and-comers. I'm pretty certain Google's going to be unseated within the next five years. It's simply due to the fact that they threw out their model. They, are, they no longer don't be evil. And their main goal is to be as evil as possible now, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, bad joke. But I've watched Google. I, I have been a Google fan since day one. I signed on and started using Google the day they launched. And you bought a bunch of shares? No, unfortunately, I didn't have any money at the time they went public. It would have been nice to have bought their shares. They went public at like $80 a share, and they dropped to 70 and now they're like 800 or something. So it would have been nice to buy shares back then. I didn't have any money. I was broke. I was just coming out of college. So at any rate, SEO is your primary goal of your website. WordPress by itself, straight out of the box, does a pretty good job of SEO. Just going through those basic settings I showed you before helps your SEO with, with WordPress straight out of the box. You can use it without an SEO plugin. Adding in an SEO plugin greatly enhances how WordPress works. There are several out there. There's Yoast, there's All-in-One SEO, and I can't remember the third big one out there. Monster Insights, I think, is the other one. Those are the three major ones that come to mind. Of the three, Yoast is the best. I've been using Yoast for a long time. I really don't like the guy. He's, <laughs> he's a bit of an ass. The way he runs his, his business and company really pissed me off most of the time. The changes he makes to the plugin irritate me, but I still like the plugin. 
and it still does a great job. It's gone through its good and bad phases over time. It's currently in a good phase of development. Relatively easy to use and pretty straightforward. Using the Yoast SEO plugin with your new website, you don't need to install the SEO plugin at this point of your website, but you should install it right after your theme is done. Before you start creating content, you want it in there. So install it as soon as you can. To, to find it, just go to Add Plugins. Look for Yoast, comes up as the number one install. And of course, you'll notice there are additional plugins that enhance Yoast. That's one of the beauties of WordPress. When there's a premium plugin out there that many people like, you will get developers who will create plugins for the plugin. <laughs> okay, yes? Do you recon uh, recommend the paid, paid one or the free one? Or is it the free version. The paid version of Yoast is when you have learned how to do SEO and you need to go above and beyond the basics. That's where the paid version comes in. I still haven't even stepped into the paid version of Yoast. I'm not, at this moment, it's not worth the 80 bucks a year to me. Okay. Many people do buy it. I have clients that ask about it. I recommend it. But doing SEO, SEO on your website can consume two to 10 hours a week of time. Just doing SEO. That's not even creating content or managing anything. That's just SEO. That's why a lot of people uh, farm out their SEO to SEO companies. Because there's a lot to know. And the rules are constantly changing. So what we're going to be covering here is basic stuff so that you can set it up and forget it. And you get really good SEO just by set and forget. Okay, so install the plugin. Then activate it. The beauty of WordPress, you can find a plugin for just about everything. But be careful about the plugins you install. Even though you get them from the WordPress repository, they've been vetted. That doesn't always mean they're good. That just means they've been vetted for malware and spyware. They're not vetted for how well the code is written, although they're doing a better job of that. So once you've installed it and activated it, you end up on the plugin page. And you can go from here to the settings page, or you can go down to the side menu and look for the Y SEO on the menu bar. And once you get a number of plugins into your website, to give you an example of how ugly it gets inside a website with lots of plugins. This is the back end of my website. Once it loads. You're on shallow bit? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it does have a bit of a delay. Not nearly as much fun as I just upgraded my internet at home to SHA-300. Boy, is that nice. See the list? It just goes on and on, and the Yoast SEO plugin is somewhere. It's way down the list. So. This is what happens once you start getting into plugins on your site. You end up with this big, giant menu of choices. So we drop into the settings for the Yoast SEO plugin. Now, the first thing you'll see once you land on this page in the settings is it will offer you a configuration wizard. I'm not going to walk through that now. It does work fairly well for getting the basic setup on Yoast. It still misses a couple of settings, I think, from what I've seen with it. And it is a quick way to get Yoast set up and fully running. Just by installing it and default settings, the way it's installed, massively enhances your website. You're going to want to go back in, though, and double check it to make sure everything is working correctly. So what it will show you here, first off, it tells you if you have any problems. And it shows one number one problem with this website is that you are blocking access to search engines. Well, that's by default. Remember that checkbox we checked off earlier that says block access to search engines? 
this is one place where you're going to get a warning about that again, which is kind of useful and helpful. So you can uncheck that and deal with that later, or just pretty much I'm going to ignore the problem by checking that out so that it doesn't show up again. Other notifications, crawl errors, it's going to ask you to go connect up with the Google um, Search Console. And we'll walk through that when we get to it. Okay, so you'll look there if there's any warnings or issues. And also, after a little while, it'll put more stuff in there as Yoast has a lot of promotions for their upgrades and other pieces. And they get all put in here for you as little warnings. So from there, you'll click on the Features tab. And this is an important thing to go through and check the settings on. This is to ensure that all the features you want for Yoast are turned on and the ones you don't want are turned off. Starting with the top one, we've got SEO analysis. You'll want this turned on. Readability analysis, you'll want this turned on. Cornerstone content, you'll want that turned on. Text link counter, you'll want that turned on. Um, the XML sitemaps, you absolutely want that turned on. Sometimes I found it to be default turned off, and I don't know why. But you want to make sure that's turned on because your XML sitemaps are very important to be submitted to the search engines. The right integration, the admin bar menu, and the security settings. Now the security, no, no advanced settings for authors. What this means, if you run a website that has more than one author on your website, meaning you hire people to produce content for your website, and you don't want them to be able to change any SEO settings, you want this turned on. And that's on a per post basis, because on every post on a website, you have a box for Yoast SEO, which allows you to go in and configure specific settings per specific post. I don't have that information in the Yoast SEO video. The Yoast SEO video is only setting up the plugin, not using it on a per page basis. So basically, you want to make sure everything's turned on. Now, in my particular case, <clears throat> since I'm the only one that does content on my website, I turned that off, the security settings. So I can make adjustments to the conical URL, so I can make adjustments to other little bits and pieces in the individual post uh, SEO box. So save those. <clears throat> the next one you're going to deal with is the Webmaster Tools. This one here is where you're going to connect your website to either to Bing, Yahoo, or no, sorry, to Bing and Google, or you can connect it to Badu or to Yandex. And Badu, I think it's Badu, that's the Chinese search engine. And then the Yandex is the Russian search engine. And unless you're doing, if you're not doing business in Russia or China, you're probably not going to use those two search engines. The Bing one, sometimes I connect it up, sometimes I don't. Currently, Google gives, or Google gives the best analytics back, so I always connect to the Google Search Console. And connecting to the Google Search Console is really quite an easy task to do. They even have a link right here for you. Now you have to be logged in to your Google account when you click this link. And what it'll do is it takes you directly to your Google account. And why aren't I logged in here? Oh, I'm in the wrong browser. Okay. So I'm not logged in here, and I'm not going to go through the headache now of re-logging in and being blocked by Google for logging into my own account from a new IP area. Google doesn't like it when you log in from new areas. So you follow the steps there. It's relatively straightforward. It asks you to register and verify a new site. It gives you a code. You then cut and paste that code into the box right here. Save that information, and now your site is connected with the Google Search Console. Okay, that's the webmaster tools. The search appearance. 
This is setting up all of the settings on how your site is going to appear in the search engines. And there's quite a few settings here from the general settings to content type to media. The first item you're going to set up is the title separator. This here is kind of just another way of having to look at uh, of how the site's going to look, how it's going to look to people. I can't get the word. It begins with an A. Aesthetic. Aesthetic, thank you. For some reason, all I could think was abstract. <laughs> it's just an aesthetic thing. How you want it. It's personal. Like some people like the dashes, long dashes. They like the bar. Uh, there's a giant period. I change it from time to time depending on my mood. And what that does for your site is that's simply how it's going to look up here in the tabs and how it's going to look in the snippet of Google. And what, how it's going to separate each of the set of words in there. I often use the, uh, the bar. This is also the place where you get to configure your home page SEO information. This is set up for the SEO title. And the SEO title, you can use the default setting they've got here, which allows you to use variables for your home page. And the variables they grab for you is site title, page, separator, and tagline. Site title being when we first set it up, that first line that said my sandbox page, and then the tag is the tagline underneath that I said, and the other play place. So those two lines is your site title and your tag. That's what's being used as your default. Then they put a separator in there, in other words, that little <laughs> bar, and then they take the tag, the uh, site title page, and oh, they put the, oh, they put them in, I got the order backwards. They got the site title, then they got the page title. So they got the site title being johnoverall.com, then the article title, then the separator, and then the tagline. And you can move those around however you like, or change them, or you can just write a plain title that you always want to appear for your homepage and tweak it out. Now the one thing they don't put in there is your meta description. You can customize your meta description. This is that snippet. When you go to Google to search for something and you see the title and then you see that little snippet of text, that's the meta description. Now, Google doesn't always use your meta description like they're supposed to, but as a general rule, that's what it's going to be. And you'll want to customize that up. You'll want to definitely customize it up for you. The knowledge graph. This is something Google is starting to put more emphasis on in their search, is the knowledge graph. And the knowledge graph is setting up whether you're a company or a person. In other words, is your website a company or is it a person? Are you an author putting up your stuff or are you a company representing products? And you'll want to choose which one it's going to be. And if it's a company, you set it up, put your company name in there, upload your logo. If it's a person, it just takes your name. Save those changes. Next item up here, you got to deal with the content types. These content types here is turning on and setting up which content types you're going to use on your site. Now, the one I, in the video I did, the video is actually done using my WP Plugins website and configuring that one up. So there's a lot of content types in there so you can get a good idea of what I'm talking about. Here, I'm only going to have you know, two content types. I'm only going to have posts and pages. Content types come into play when you add a plugin such as an events calendar. That's a whole new content type for your site. When you add a photo gallery, that's a whole new content type. And all of these content types, which is one of the reasons why I say the Yoast plugin should be set up before you produce content, but after you've created your theme and your plugins, because themes and plugins add their own content types. So you have a lot of stuff to configure afterwards. And if you set this up before you do that, 
chances are you'll forget to go back, which is one of the reasons my, my website was so out of date with my Yo settings. Aside from the fact that I just left it default. So it shows up here, allows you to open up the posts and to set the content types, you can show the posts to search in, show the posts in search results. The item below that is to set and show a date snippet in the search results. And the date snippet can be a good and bad to show the date snippet. If you're writing content that it can become stale dated, you will want to show the date snippet. It's kind of a tough call which way you go with it. The Yoast SEO meta box, this is the box that's going to appear inside the post when you create a post for customizing the content. And I will show you that here in a bit. And again, <clears throat> you can customize up the SEO title and the meta description. And in this particular case, you will want to customize it with uh, variables. You won't want to put solid content to search engines because it's pointless. It doesn't, it's not stuff I publish to the public, but it's still there. So I want that hidden. So you can turn on and off whether those posts or pages or that content type is shown in the index. So you'll want to go through all of them and, and customize each and every one that's in your site. And again, you've got the same sort of thing here on the media tab, your media attachment URLs. You want to have these set up and turned on. What it does is it redirects the links for the search engines to your media attachment. Some plugins and galleries and other things will redirect the media attachment to a gallery to display it. It'll put it in a different format. But what this does is for search engine, it redirects the media to the actual URL of the images or media content that you've uploaded to your site. So you'll want to have that turned on. Taxonomies. Taxonomies in this case is your categories and tags that you create for your posts. Pages you can create tags for, but pages cannot be categorized. Taxonomies are useful and there's been a lot of discussion off and on over the years whether having listing of categories and tags being indexed creates duplicate content for your site. Because you can look up a post via a tag, a category, or a post name. And they all intertwine and each one of those items, you can have a post at johnoverall.com slash podcast slash tag help or you can have it at johnoverall.com slash podcast slash uh, category slash uh, training and it'll be the exact same page but Google sees them as three different uh, unique pages because they're three different unique URLs and that's only because you're using tags or categories and how this is dealt with is when you're pre when you're fine-tuning this, there's a spot where you can set your conical URL. And conical URL is a way of pointing categories and tags back to the primary URL. <clears throat> and what that does is that helps alleviate the SEO and duplicate content issue. So it's a bit of work, but it can be worthwhile. But you want it linked like that because you never know how people are going to search or find your site. So you do want to have that up there. And categories, you want to have them set up and turned on. And again, you want to go through and set the SEO title. You want to set the meta description up using variables so that that information is of value and useful to people when they're searching for you. And you'll do that for both categories and tags and the format post types. And the format post type may or may not be in there when you finally get to this because so many of these things change depending on your theme and the plugins you have installed. <clears throat> because each of them customize things in multiple ways.
Now this is another one here that people discuss, the category URLs. You can either keep the category prefix or remove the category prefix. And what they mean by that, it would be johnoverall.com slash category slash training videos. Category being there in the middle. Now, if you remove that, in other words, turn this off to remove it, it'll just be johnoverall.com slash training videos. Now, a problem can occur if you've done things such as me where you've already created another page called training videos. Now, you got a page called training videos, now you got a category called training videos. Now, when it's being indexed, there's a conflict. So, some people like to remove it because they think it produces cleaner <laughs> SEO, but again, it can create problems for you. So, you'll want to be aware of what you've done or what you're planning with your site when you do this. So. Keep that one in mind. Archives, you're going to set up the archives again, similar to categories. The archives are based upon your categories. And again, you'll want to go through and set it up. You do have author, archive, author archives, which is a really great thing to use if you have multiple authors on your website. If you're like me and 99% of your content is all done by me, author archives are kind of redundant. But you can use the author archives and let them be indexed. And again, set up the SEO title and the meta description. You can have date archive. You got date ar archives. WordPress creates archives by date and it creates them by special pages. So these are again things you'll want to open up, go through. Configure one at a time. Make sure you set up everything the way you want it to be done. Okay, the breadcrumbs item. This one here is almost useless today. If you install a theme on your site. If you use the default WordPress theme, it can be useful. But once you install a theme, Probably 99% of all themes I used in the last seven years have a breadcrumb system. And anyone not know what I'm talking about, breadcrumbs? Okay. The breadcrumb system is when somebody's on your website and they go into a page. Oh, that was a good example. They go into a page. You'll find a thing that says you are here, blog posts, and blog posts, uh, newsletter, WordPress plugins, A to Z. So it's, it tells people where they are. And in that breadcrumb list up there, they can click on any one of those items in the breadcrumbs and pop back and forth. You've probably seen it on websites. It's a, it's a trail of where you're located in the site. And almost all themes have them built in. Yoast has a add-on here that if your theme doesn't have it, you can turn this on and it will automatically create breadcrumbs for you. It does require a little bit of setup, so chances are you're not going to use it. Okay, and the final setting here is the RSS setting. This is the RSS feed setting. And what this does for you, this allows you to customize the before and after sentence in your RSS feed. And in particular, to give you an idea on what that is, the before, like the, the, the snippet information is in the middle here. The before is this article about title of the post, first appeared on johnoverall.com, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can put an after. They default give you a default after one that says this post first appeared on your website. And the reason you want to do that is people will take your RSS feed and syndicate, syndicate your content. They will take your content and post it on their websites. And they won't even look at it. They'll just set up an RSS feed syndication. And every time you post something, it's automatically ripped from your site. It's published on their site. 
So one of the things that made the internet great, and one of the things that really irritated a lot of people about the internet. It's a grabbing of content, moving it around, and taking people's content. I've done a lot of RSS syndication. It's a great tool. It brings in lots of useful information. Just make sure you give credit where credit's due, and never take more than fair share copyright allows. In other words, a sentence or two, and then link back to their website for the whole article. Some people don't do that, which is another reason why I set up the RSS as before, limit it to just the excerpt, because then they can't take my whole article. They have to go to my website to get the whole article. So anyway, I set up with this, I set up a snippet before and after the content, so no matter what they rip, I get my credit, even if they forget to get it, get it to me. That's the important part about this. And there's a set of variables that you can use in there to automatically produce the information you want it to produce. Okay, those are the basic settings of Yoast. And there's a couple of other settings here that you'll want to deal with. Underneath the search console, or underneath the general, general appearance is a search console setup. This is an additional <laughs> connection to Google. What this one allows you to do, once you connect it up, give you an idea of once it's connected up. You've got your website registered in the search console. You connected your website to the search console or Yoast to the search console. Now what happens is you're going to find that there's 404 and other errors on your website. You don't have to go to the search console at Google to get them you can get them right in your dashboard of your WordPress website and allow you to start dealing with them immediately. It makes it much easier to deal with all the 404 errors and other errors that Google has found about your website that you can see I have a small list here I haven't dealt with yet. The team. What's a, I, you got me now. What's a 404 error? Oh. <clears throat> Fireball found. Yeah, yeah Fireball oh, okay. found. I go to your website looking for X page and it pops in and says, hey, that doesn't exist here. Can't help you. And uh, the fun thing to do with your website is to create a creative 404 page. Instead of just having the default file not found, you can create a customized 404 page. I've seen some really interesting ones out there on the web. Yeah. Sometimes little choppers going, hey, man, we're sorry. The puppies got to it and chewed up the slippers. We just can't find it right now. <laughs> you know, so it's like, be creative with your 404 page. Lots of ways to do that. There's actually plugins to do that. To authenticate this with the Google Search Console, again, click click the Get Google Authentication Code. It will pop up a window in Google asking you what account to connect to. You connect to the account. It gives you a big, long code. You copy that code. You paste it in. You click Authenticate, and you're connected. It takes all of about two or three minutes to do when you're properly logged into Google and everywhere else you need to be logged into. Social, this one is important to set up. Set it up completely, as complete as you possibly can to all of your social accounts. The first thing on it is to set up all the URLs for your social accounts, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, LinkedIn, MySpace. I can't believe MySpace is still there. <laughs> Pinterest, YouTube, Google, Google Plus, I should say. Get all your URLs and put them in there. Then set up the individual tabs for Facebook. You set up the image URL. You can upload this very specific image so that when people share your content to Facebook and it doesn't grab the, uh, you don't have a proper image on the page they're sharing, it will use the image you set here. So you can set a very specific image to always be used when it can't find a page. But it'll still try to find the image off the page first? It usually tr it tries to it tries to find the um, feature image. Featured image, thank you. It tries that even to get that set. Mm -hmm. And now this is sort of like the last it's the fallback. resort. It's the fallback. Okay. <clears throat> fallback for when you don't create a featured image, which sometimes happens. Um, set the title the specific title you want used, and a description. Okay, and you'll want to set up Twitter. And this one here, 
You've got two choices. Uh, everyone know what Twitter cards are? No. You, everyone use Twitter? I hardly do. But. No. Okay. And if you're not using it, it's no big deal. But if you're using Twitter, Twitter cards, if you're using Twitter, you'll see some of the tweets. They have these big images in them. That's what's known as the Twitter card. And that you can set here. You can, do, you can have it do a summary with a large image or a summary with a smaller image. And it grabs the image from the page or post. Pinterest, connect Pinterest up, and then Google Plus, connect them all up. Connect all of these up because what it does, it helps enhance your site with the, with the search engine and the social networks. So sorry, if you connect them or uh, put all your URLs in for them, mm -hmm. does that mean you have to have accounts with yeah. all those? Yeah, if you don't have the accounts, don't put them in. You put in only the accounts that you right. belong to. But that means you also have to maintain all those accounts as well, right? With yeah, to some extent. <laughs> okay. I mean, I have Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest. I, it's like I, I can't remember the last time I was in my Pinterest. Like I created it, yeah. used it for a little while, connected it to all my websites, mm -hmm. and then I set up automation on my websites to auto-post to it, and then I okay. forgot it. Right. And the only ones I use actively is Facebook, Twitter. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. In the US Plugin. There are options uh, regarding Twitter and Facebook um, where you don't have to have those accounts, but you want to go through those options uh, because what they do is make sure that when someone uh, shares a particular web page on your site, on their Twitter feed or Facebook, uh, whatever link is created in their Facebook or Twitter, um, it'll show your preferred name or, or whatever. You'll, you'll have some control yeah. over how you're represented in them sharing yeah. your web, website. Oh. Yeah, now, now, now I understand what you're doing. Yeah, okay, and that's these two items here. Yeah. These two tabs here, the Facebook and Twitter tab. You'll want to set these up, especially the Facebook one, because they give you more information to have control over. Yeah, yeah you're right there. <clears throat> okay. Now the final item here is tools. These tools here in Yoast are, can be powerful and dangerous at the same time. The import and export tool, this one allows you to import settings from other SEO plugins. Let's say you inherit a website or you've got a website that's been up for a while, it's using all-in-one SEO or some other SEO plugin. You can just import all the settings from that one into the Yoast, thereby saving you some time and setup. Uh, the export tool, if you're building out websites and you build out a default website, which is what this website is becoming for me as a default website, and it will become my clone for when I want to build a new website, I'll take this and I'll clone it. This is a way to export the settings in SN Yoast and import them into another website. You have all the exact same settings. So you only have to do it once if you have multiple websites. The file editor tool. What this one's for, this allows you to set up your robots.txt file and edit it and to edit your HT access file. Now your robots.txt file, now they give you an option here. If you don't have one, it asks if you want to create one. Say yes. You want a robots.txt file. I don't have the information readily available of what goes into the default robots.txt file because there are things you'll want to put in there to allow the search engines to go in certain places and keep them out of other places. I have a default one I use that is, seems to be perfect, keeps Google and all the other well-behaved search engines out of the wrong uh, directories and allows them access to directories they should have. The HT access file, this file here, is one that when can do some serious damage to your site. And to give you an idea on what one looks like that has a lot of code in it, this is the one off my website. There's my default, uh, my default uh, robots text file. But this is an HD access file with a lot of code in it for customizations. For cross scripting protection, 
for uh, firewall blockage, caching, a whole lot of things goes into your HD access file. One wrong edit in your HD access file and you can lock yourself out of your site completely. And the only way you're going to fix it is to FTP in or cPanel in, uh, erase the HD access file, let it be, let it be automatically reboot, rebuilt, or go in and edit the file. But it is the file that controls all access to your website. So use care when, you, when editing that file. And the final tool here, or there's actually two, but the next one, the bulk editor tool. The bulk editor tool, give you an idea of what it looks like on a site where it's actually going to be a value, is it allows you to go in and bulk edit your title tags and your you can just go down the pages, look for the title. If it doesn't have a proper title, you can then write one and say, or you can just go down the bulk editor. You use care with it. You might change things you don't want to change. And bulk edit these titles and descriptions. <laughs> And the is this is the account the internal links on your website. On your website. And this has become more important for Google's SEO. Also important for the search engine pages in as much as you can and link from one page to the next page to the next page. You can then start managing those links and doing things with those links. That's his name. That's his name. That's his name. His name is Ghost. Like Ghost with a Y. So you enter in your all your social media. Links, mm -hmm. which I also um, plug in uh, social warfare. Do they 